everybody. Welcome to another episode of Banking on Experience. I'm your host, James Gilbert. Really excited about today because we're going to be joined by a guest and we're going to be talking about a topic again that we've never talked about on here. So stay tuned. Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining the, the podcast. <laughs> Let's start that. Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining the podcast, Banking on Experience. For all of our listeners out there, please subscribe. Give us a rating. We would love to hear from you. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about compliance. And we're going to give a little bit of a different feel for it. We are joined by Rachel Geiselman, who is the Compliance Manager Operations Inc. So, Rachel, tell us a little bit about you and where you're at right now. Sure. Thank you for having me today, James. Uh, so a little bit about me. I have been in the financial industry since college, so a little over 10 years now. Um, I started as a, a part-time teller at a small community bank, and um, since then I have I started my first credit, credit union in Guam, actually, when my husband was stationed there. And since then, I have been focused and really dedicated on a career in financial services. A fun fact about me is in the third grade, um, I was asked what I wanted to be when I grew up, and I said a banker. <laughs> so not a standard answer for a kid, um, but my stepmom was in banking, and so I saw it as a place uh, honestly, when they, they asked why I said, because I got to dress up and go to meetings. So, um, <laughs> today that's developed a little bit more than dressing up and going to meetings, but I still love my career in the financial services world. And, um, I am very excited about my compliance role at Int credit union and partnering with the overall teams there to produce an excellent member experience. Love it. So let's talk about you for a little bit longer because I'd like to I'd like the audience to get to know you a little bit. So I'm going to ask you two quick questions. Who's your hero and why? <laughs> That's the first one. Uh, the second question is what's your favorite vacation spot? Cool. All right. So you asked probably the hardest question there is for me to answer, and that is the hero question. I've always struggled to place that kind of um, burden on someone, uh, but I will say that I have a lot of folks that I look up to um, that are still here with us today and people of the past, women who have um, paved paths for me to be where I'm at today, to have the voice that I have today. Day. Um, and also, uh, you know, my father was a really important role in my life. Um, I primarily grew up with him and he helped me to realize that just because of my gender, I will not be stopped and that I can do whatever I want to do. So um, heroes, that is my hero answer. Love that. <laughs> you should never be ashamed of that, by the way. That's that's a great answer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I always hope that I can have some eloquent, you know, like famous name or reason, but hey, we, we all can't have heroes like Gandhi and all that. I mean, right? <laughs> that actually, to me, sometimes feels a little bit more fluff than real. So <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate the support. Um, favorite vacation spot? Oh. You know, really any place that has sun, I'm a freckled individual, so I burn very easily, but I absolutely love the sun and uh, anywhere that I can get a sense of relaxation to unplug makes me a happy camper. Love it. I have a little bit of um, freckles as well. A lot of people like comment about the red that they see in my beard and I don't know why but it just it bothers me <laughs> I, have, I have a daughter who is a redhead and I love her to death and but like I don't know why it bothers me when people tell me I have red in my beard <laughs> just I don't know <laughs> anyway that's besides the point so let's get back let's actually talk about the topic that we chose to talk about today so we're going to talk about compliance we're going to take a little bit of a different view from it I'd like for you to first tackle this question what challenges the credit union space when working with a compliance team? Sure. 
So my perspective on compliance might be a little bit different than uh, probably what the average listener thinks of compliance. I think the, the toughest challenge for a credit union as a whole is uh, determining and controlling their culture around compliance. Um, as we all know, culture exists no matter what. But to have a positive compliance culture takes energy and focus, and it's challenging. And so I would say that that's definitely the most difficult uh, thing that credit unions face when working with a compliance team, really any financial institution. Um, now, individual departments, I think their toughest role is or, or challenge is kind of overcoming the stereotypes that exist with, with compliance. Um, and again, that all goes back to culture. So culture is definitely the compliance culture is definitely the, the biggest hurdle. So let's talk about that a little bit. Could you talk about, um, first of all, it being positive. So why does it get a negative rap? <laughs> Uh, well, I think, you know, so if everybody can close their eyes and think of an accountant, what do you think of, right? Um, so similar to compliance, if you were to think of a compliance individual, you think of a stuffed shirt, you think real serious, and you kind of think um, black or white strict edge. And, um, but really, if you think of other people who have the burden of with uh, of upholding a a law or a rule, um, you'll think of the same thing. So a judge, you think of them as very serious and not as a like a, an individual person. Uh, perhaps a, a law officer or a lawyer, or the parent in the household who maintains the rules and is known as like the authoritarian, like, oh, go ask dad, don't ask mom. <laughs> um, you think of that real serious person, right? And that is what compliance in inevitably ends up being because at the end of the day, we really do have a big burden on our shoulders um, to make sure that we are supporting our financial institution and a positive growth mindset, but our biggest goal is to make sure that we're compliant. And so sometimes those two agendas butt heads. Hmm. This is good. I want to start diving into something that you had mentioned, which how compliance can really start driving the customer experience and customer servicing just in general. So we're going to dive into that in just a little bit. Before we do, let's think about how we can change the mentality of teams that work with compliance and sure. a compliance team. So what can, what can people do today to help change that? First, and I'm my compliance colleagues and peers probably uh, will, will want to roll their eyes, but I would like to take ownership of our role as compliance in this overall process in um, transforming the the view of compliance. And the burden again comes back to us to ensure that we're communicating. We are trying to understand why a department or a team wants to execute what they want to execute and how they want to execute it. So really starting there, what we can do internally as a compliance department, but also for the outside teams. Um, Instead of hiding from compliance, trying to tiptoe past that, that gatekeeper, so to speak, instead think of how can I include compliance from the ground up? Instead of presenting this project that I have grown to love and that my teammates and I have hashed out and you know really done all that difficult work, and then we present it and we feel um, defensive, like compliance is eating it up or, you know, picking it apart. Instead, maybe could I invite a compliance person to sit in on the project from ground up? Mm -hmm. Could I get their buy-in? Can I get, um, can I solve a lot of these problems before they even arise? Like, can I ask, Hey, what are the challenges going to be? For example, online account opening, what are the challenges going to be when my ultimate goal is to allow a new uh, member that we've sent marketing to, we've paid all of this money and time into attracting them. Uh, 
and now they're going to sign up and I want to, I want to like auto approve them for a loan. What, what's going to be the challenges there? Cause all this sounds groovy in my head. It sounds perfect. It cannot be wrong. And allowing that compliance person to say, okay, well, let's get, let's start with basics. Who are they? And how do we know they are who they say they are? You know, starting there and really building together as a team, instead of bringing compliance in after we've tiptoed past them uh, through the whole project. I like to think of compliance a lot more as a strategic role than anything, right? Because if you think about it, even though it might get a negative rap, bringing bringing somebody on the compliance team into a conversation where you're planning for something like that can actually add more value than you may realize. Mm -hmm. Like it can identify if they're making you go deeper and trying to understand who that person really is. Maybe there's data points that you actually might be able to leverage, okay, without making public that can make it even more powerful and more personal, which is, I think everyone's goal at a credit union is to be more personal and understand their members even more. So I think that in general, the compliance team, I actually really liked the way that you put it as a metaphor when we were talking before. Tell tell the audience. I don't want to steal that. (laughs) I challenged folks to, instead of thinking uh, of compliance as the trolls who hide under the bridge and come up and attack uh, when you're trying to cross it, or as the hobbits in the hole who you never really want to talk to or disturb, to think of us as people and include us in your uh, your efforts. Yeah, maybe that's the nerd in me that really loves, <laughs> like, you know, the Lord of the Rings and all that. I love that stuff, but it, but I think that's a really great analogy because I do think that oftentimes it's seen as like the last ditch effort. Now we need to make sure all of this goes through compliance, and you've got to do it much sooner in the planning process. I think that goes goes also even deeper into some of just the day-to-day work that happens at a credit union on how to make sure that compliance is translated from one group uh, at the organization to the, ne- to the next, right? If they're yeah. handing mm-hmm. work off. So let's get into uh, some, of the, some of the specifics about member experience. I'd like for you to take a few minutes and tell us how you feel like this translates to the member experience and even, even servicing a member in general. Sure. So again, even though I said, don't think of us as a gatekeeper, (laughs) um, at the end of the day, we kind of are in the way that you might be able to go um, trailblaze and wild west it and hope for the best when the examiners show up. Um, But your your leadership team is not going to be super cool with that. Um, So instead, you know, compliance if we if we're not working together as a team and there's a bunch of tension, I think there tends to be this um, tendency to say, well, fine, then you have to do all of these things and you have to jump through 10 hoops. Well, I like to say that what's very important to me is the employee experience and the member experience. And that's because if if I or my my department, my team put in 10 hoops, the proverbial hoop, that this employee has to jump through to execute this task um, in a compliant way, one we run into is the employee actually going to do it, um, which has all of its own issues. But two, if they do do that, what does that look like once that task finally gets executed for the member? You usually have a flustered employee. You have a confused employee. You have an employee who's just irritable. Like, okay, here, fine. Here's your debit card. You sign 14 documents to get it. Here it is. Um, Instead of working together to make that employee experience seamless, reduce the friction so that there is less friction and hurdles for the member. And so it all leads back to that member experience. Preach, Rachel, preach. (laughs) This is good. I mean, listen, like there's nothing more true than the employee experience. 100% translates to the member experience in every way, shape and form. So I love the fact that you you bring that to light. I know that we didn't have this necessarily in our framework, but I'd love to understand a little bit more about this because as as I'm hearing you talk about this, all I can think about is, uh, how there are easier ways to simplify work for the employees to make their experience better. So let's talk about that a little. How can credit unions do some of that? And how does you being part of the planning actually create that for them? 
Absolutely. So again, as you just said, inviting compliance in from the ground up or, or perhaps, you know, I might my past credit union, we were a small shop and we identified that we were missing key procedures. So things were not getting completed um, the same at every location or sometimes the same at each uh, location, at the same location. There was no consistency, right? And so it wasn't a new task. It was just determining the way we were all going to do it, the way we were going to show a united front and move forward in our efforts. And um, because we were a small shop, I was compliance and marketing and the project manager. (laughs) So I got to be in on all the projects. But the unintentional benefit of that is that while we worked through these processes, how are we going to execute this task that we've been doing for a long time. It's cashing checks, nothing new, Uh, but how are we going to execute it all the same? Uh, Bringing me in on that and then all of the other key players, we were able to to determine upfront what the rules were, so to speak, the compliance components, and then what the employee pain points were. And then we would run through uh, member scenarios. And so really that ended up producing these procedures that were seamless for the employee and therefore frictionless for the member. Not always perfect because naturally we just have things that we have to comply with, right? Uh, For example, the small credit union that I was with was in Alaska and um, BSA requires we get a physical address. Well, when you live in rural, remote Alaska, you don't have net I mean you have a physical address but it might be like lot this uh on this island you know it's not <laughs> there isn't one two three Smith Street and so th- that became a hurdle and sometimes it's just it is what it is but if you can get that employee buy-in up front of we have to have this because of this regulation going back to that communication piece and helping them to understand we went from whew, double digits and not getting it fail rate on getting the the um, physical address to single digits. It was very rare that we weren't getting it because the employees understood and bought in. I love this. This is a really good topic. I think everybody can get a lot from it. Let's talk about what are some steps that credit unions can take with their compliance team to ensure that there is a successful member experience and also that that translates to the employee experience. What can they do today? Do a self check on what is the culture surrounding your compliance? Is it positive? Is it, you know, um, from, for, for credit unions and for community banks, the board has a responsibility to ensure that compliance is taken seriously. So they have this compliance component to their duties. Um, but what does that look like? Is it an irritation and a frustration all the way at the top? Or is it, okay, let's play this game. How do we stick to compliance and have run a very successful business, uh, a credit union, a bank, so we, whatever the, the financial institution is. Um, so starting at the top and doing a self-check, what does that compliance look like? And then ensuring that your key, um, your key players. So those, the various department leaders are on board with that too, that compliance isn't just a frustration and an afterthought. It is instead just part of the thread that, that builds the credit union. Mm. That's gold right there. Go on. (laughs) I, so we're, we're about at time. I would love for you to give everybody that listens, um, an opportunity to reach out to you, get to know you a little bit. Where can they reach Rachel? Absolutely. So you can reach me at don't freak out. It's phonetic. R Geiselman at int.com. That's R Guy G U Y Cell S E L Man at E N T dot com. Um, or my number is 907 821 2674. I would love to collaborate and get geeked out on compliance. <laughs> love it, Rachel. You've been awesome. Thank you so much for joining the podcast. Thank you for having me.